Newsflash! Petaconi's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Accompanied by Clocky's TikToks, after 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. Uh, I already told you! We can talk things out! <laughs> I'm sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so... I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off-grid for too long. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? <laughs> it probably is. Pardon my frankness. But there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. Oh, <laughs> this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter, an eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes, so... You all have to first prove yourselves, eh? Huh? Where are you going? Hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a... model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Hmm, model fudger? This is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the Xianzhou Lofu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Xianzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of Cloud Knights. Now... I reckon that'd be one fudge sight to behold. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right then, tell me. What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. 
Everyone's on their own fated path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. This reply does not instill trust, and only makes your predicament more... precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinaconi for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Oh, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. The son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all memetic organisms, uh, appearing one moment and gone the next. Uh, she scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron, and according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. <sighs> so, do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you'd best send a message to them, but I'd advise you to move fast. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do. I don't intend to do anything. That's not up to you. Did you know? 
people who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, died with the mist of nihility. And this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. A single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. That's not the point. Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Penicone and the peace. The planet of festivities has no place for you. A puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to dread the illuminated stage. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Penacone's dream master. <laughs> That's just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is a real me. We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. If you think you can. Are you threatening me? Hmm. I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident. But be reminded, the family is forgiving, but not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath. 
in all of your lifetime. 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings, and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. <sighs> but that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Acheron. A befitting name. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios Theme Park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? Oh, Miss Robin! Am I seeing things right? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just... Those chips you normally see everywhere, the green ones, they fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep this secret? The raining chips were supposed to be part of my act. Oh, I see! Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you.
Thank you. As appreciation, I like to give you a token gift. Oh, this button is. Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. And there could be an unexpected treat in store for you. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. <laughs>